here she is, the beautiful, beautiful Brockhampton Manor House, originally built for John Dumbleton around 1425. Now the Brockhampton estate is about 1700 acres, it's absolutely huge and today it's owned by the National Trust. But at the centre of this massive estate is this gorgeous old manor house um, which is built near the ancient Norman chapel which uh, I'll take you to once we have a little peek inside the house. Brockhampton is such a beautiful, beautiful example of a medieval moated manor house. One of my favourites, I think, in all of England. Now, the only access across the moat is through this picturesque timber-framed gatehouse built in about 1530. So a little bit of a later addition, something that the family added on as a display of wealth. Um, just make themselves look a bit more fancy. And the name Brockhampton comes from a combination of Old English words meaning brook settlement um, and was first recorded as Brockenton in 1166. Now, the family built the Norman Chapel here around 1180, but it was then another 200 years before a future descendant of that family, John Dumbleton, built the moated manor house as we see it today. And what a beauty she is! So the Dumbleton family and their descendants lived here at Brockhampton Manor for over 500 years. Now, as society changed, it became much more important for the family to live separately from their servants and estate workers who all for the previous centuries lived here in the house with them. Um, so eventually in the Georgian period, um, Bartholomew Barnaby inherited the property um, at some point in the 18th century. Now, under his care, the family moved out from this beautiful, gorgeous, ancient timber frame building and into a much grander mansion house at the top of the estate. Um, that still exists. Um, I haven't shown you, but you know, it's back up at the top of the valley. So where you see me drive in to the estate at the start of this video, the main house is now up there. It still exists and there's still a family living in it. Um, but yeah, at this time, Bartholomew Barnaby decided that the family were all moving out of this beautiful old manor and into this grand, new, fashionable Georgia Manor house. And because of that, this wonderful house has survived almost intact as a wonderful little time capsule. I absolutely love it. He did this house a bit of a favour, really. Um, from the 18th century onwards, it was home to estate workers, which obviously didn't have a great deal of money, so they couldn't make any uh, modernisations. Um, but yeah, because they didn't have much money, eventually the house did fall into disrepair. Um, so sadly, as the centuries rolled by, the ancient timbers suffered and the building reached a state of disrepair. Um, and eventually, uh, a renowned Victorian architect, J.C. Buckler, visited. Um, and he was commissioned to carry out a sensitive repair of the building, bringing it back from the brink of destruction, really. Um, so when he arrived at Brockhampton, he had officially retired from a rather illustrious career, but couldn't resist the chance of saving such a charming and unique property. Um, I think it had been over 100 years since the family had relocated to the mansion at this point. And um, he was taken by the manor's crooked limbs and all the irregular lines and, oh, it's just, yeah, all of its wonky, beautiful goodness. Now, he left strict instructions to those working on the manor, all the people that he employed, um, stating that repairs to any material should only be made if essential. Um, if any new materials were to be used, then they were to be treated to look old. Um, so the timber frames were stained and things like bricks were lime washed just to keep the authenticity to this beautiful property.
Most of the repairs took place in the Great Hall and now here Buckler removed a bedroom floor and three dormer windows in the roof. The floor was repaved with flagstones from another part of the house and um, he also designed and inserted the staircase that now leads up to the upper gallery. The wall of the kitchen was restored, the floor paved with bricks brickwork throughout the building was conserved or replaced, the roof tiles were repaired. Now by the time he had finished, Brockhampton Manor was once again a beautiful quaint timber framed little abode. Um, it wasn't a derelict ruin and much of the character of the house that you see today is thanks to his careful, careful restoration of this property. Thank you.
Right, well that is it for Brockhampton for the moment. Heading back to the car now and I'm gonna head back to the cottage, get some food on I think, and then possibly start the hot tub. Can't make up my mind yet, but it's a wood burner one, so it'll take three to four hours, so we'll see. Might be a plan for the evening. So cute! time got my barilla been a bit of a dreary start to the morning. It's been quite uh, wet, very, very cloudy. Last night um, I got back to the cottage and just enjoyed some really lovely dinner and um, I had an early night and I think it was much needed. I woke up at 5.40, my natural alarm clock just went off at 5.40, but I thought that's far too early to be getting up so um, I'm back to bed for a bit and I've had a nice slow start to the day. Um, this morning I have come out to a very, very gorgeous old property. Um, it's called Stokesay Castle and I'm really excited to show this one to you because it's just a blast from the past. It really is. It's absolutely phenomenal. So I'm going to go and sort my parking out and go inside. And there she is. Oh, can you hear the birds? Chirping away. And this is Stokesy Castle. Mm. 
so here she is. This is Stokesy Castle, a fabulous survival from the medieval period. It dates to 1280. It was built by Lawrence of Ludlow, which is the neighbouring town. A really beautiful place. If I have time, I'll take you there. But lots of uh, half-timbered buildings. It's just full of charm and history. Um, so yeah, Lawrence of Ludlow built this house. And today it's one of the finest examples of a surviving medieval manor house in existence. It's just superb. But Lawrence of Ludlow made his money in wool, as this area and the Cotswolds and a lot of England did back at that time. So he was a wool merchant, a fabulously, fabulously wealthy wool merchant. And this is his home. Was his home. I don't know about you guys, but there's something very, very French feeling about this place. I think with the, the timber frames and the sort of the beige colouring in between, rather than sort of black and white that you have in Herefordshire nowadays, um, it just feels very, very Norman. It's like you're going around on Fleur or one of the picturesque villages in Normandy. It's just very, very French feel. But I think that must go back to how old this property is and the fact that it was built sort of not long after the Norman invasion. But either way, it's got a beautiful feel to it. So that is the gatehouse into the property. That was a newer addition. That dates to 1640. So still ancient, but a good few centuries after everything else. Isn't it amazing? So the oldest part is the tower just over there. So the bit that I said looks very, very Norman in style. Then you've got the Great Hall, which is all of this. Up there, you've got the fortifications. Your church. And of course the gatehouse, which dates to 1640, so that's the newest bit.
So this is the bottom of the North Tower, which is the oldest, oldest, oldest part of the castle. Dates to 1280s. And this is the space that was used to prepare the food that was eaten in the hall and wash the dishes and all of the kitchen functions. So they think this was the scullery. This is where all the plates would come back from the Great Hall and washed. So when they excavated this big hole, they found loads of animal bones, stag and boar and food that would be eaten. So they think this was the scullery. Which makes sense with it being here in the kitchen. But look at that, look how ancient it is. I wonder how old those beams are. You can just about make out on the walls old, old drawing, painting, filigree. These stairs are horrible. I feel like I'm gonna fall through any second. Oh, really not nice. Oh my god, these are terrifying. Even the handrail ain't much better. Look at that. And I'm assuming, seeing as this is English heritage. It is all structurally sound. Look at those beams. Look, you can see how they're sort of blackened at the top. So, as medieval life progresses and the the family don't all sleep together in a great hall. The family come up here. This is their main living room and sleeping room. You've got these beautiful windows, which would originally have had Italian glass imported. I highly doubt they are now. Up here, you can see plaster on the wall. That is from the 17th century when it was all plastered over, so they're remnants from then. This little room they think would have been the lavatory. They'd put a commode in there, obviously. Didn't have any toilets in here, but they'd have a commode in there, and at least this was a bit more of a private space. The suggestions that this little nook over here would have been for an oil lamp or some form of lighting. And then you've got the addition of the fireplace, which was added with this wooden surround. A really, really lovely space though. So this is all the oldest part of the tower. This is in the 12th century tower, although this room over here was added later. But yeah.
just gonna look at these beams. So this is the second tower. Unfortunately, there was a massive fire which gutted most of it. You can still see remnants of it on some of the beams. So I had to undergo quite a massive restoration project, but thankfully, miraculously, it does still survive. <laughs> 